Oh, wow. Everyone's online. Hello. Good evening. It's early still, but um, since we have people online, welcome, Valerie. Hello, Chad, Body, and of course, our co-host guest, Amy. Hi, Dave. Good. And David Williams. Welcome. Wow. Uh -huh. uh, welcome, Stuart. Oh, you have the baby? Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't want to go to sleep. And we don't, do not have a babysitter tonight. So. You didn't want to let him cry it out? No. <laughs> because the other baby was, was asleep. And I had just put him to sleep. So. Okay. You may have to mute quite a lot then. All right. I will. It starts off. I will. And Stuart is here. Stuart, we, are, we enjoyed reading about your physical garden. So um, since we are early and Amy's here on the line, we usually use the first 10 minutes to do like some virtual hors d'oeuvres type thing. I have no food because I was hoping to just pop in um, really, really on time. But Dad, should Dave, should we unmute everyone and see how? Oh, they, they can unmute if they want to. If you have any questions or um, if you just got on in early because you just wanted to get set up, um, that's fine while you get your stuff together. That's great. Um, if you had any questions for us or wanted to know where we are, uh, who we are, <laughs> well, I guess this would be a good intro, for, intro place for those of you who are new to us. Uh, my name is Nikki. Oh. I'm uh, David. <laughs> and we live in a. Go ahead. Uh, you can do the intro. Okay, we live in a a town home. You can see our our backyard garden in the back, a little bit, um, and we grow. I would say during the summer, about twenty five percent of our produce comes from our garden, um, and we are passionate about helping families like yours grow their own food through education, through learning step by step the way we did, but um, avoiding all the mistakes that we made. So these are what these, these webinars are about. It's how to see how you can incorporate time, learn about composting, learn about seed starting, learn about mm. seed saving, fermentation, mushrooms, and all things permaculture, which by the way, permaculture, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, is a design system that integrates your garden, your animals, your plants, the people who live around it, your home, um, into an, a holistic design so that you can have a sustainable life. Does that sum it up, Dave? Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So you, you model your garden over patterns in nature so that you're working with nature instead of against it uh, i guess you can also call it kind of lazy gardening because your uh nature is naturally abundant so you you're working with nature to pr produce an uh, abundant food system that's right so yeah so we are you um like i said we've got five minutes um okay i have a little game here and if at the end at the end of the um, webinar, I can since it's five minutes early. At the end of the webinar, um, we will see, and you can type. You can use the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. Oh, is it on the right hand? Yep, right lower right hand of your screen. Mm. Use the chat box during the presentation to ask any questions about our um, guest tonight um, and about what she's teaching, which is how to mm. integrate. Mm gardening into a busy life like ours I and mean, we have six kids we have twins Ooh, we have a chat hey. That's you. <laughs> uh i'm just gonna move it started raining outside and you left the stroller outside so oh thank you. Right and can you can you close the door on the so that your screen looks like neat and tidy never mind okay so while dave does that it started raining here um i am going to play a song because we have four more minutes let me see if we can find that song. 
And if you guys have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Or did you, if you just wanted to tell us how you found us, how did you find um, this webinar, or if you've been following us for a while, you can type it on the chat. Here is a song that I'm playing from a friend, not a newfound friend of ours. I mean, well, I won't tell you. Are you sharing your screen? I, I can't. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Oops. There. I, I can't hear your video now. I mean, Sorry. I muted myself. There we go. That was our friend, well, newfound friend from the Green Festival, Charlie McGee. Oh, I don't say the name. Oh no, he was supposed to be my my guess your song. Today I want to show you guys the next gen Chevy Oops. Equinox. Let what me do you just think? Ooh, that's pretty. Turn that off. Sorry about that. Okay, so now without further ado, let us go to our guest and Amy. You feel free to unmute, I'll unmute you if you, whenever you're ready. Um, I will introduce her and then get in. So Amy Strauss is an avid permaculture designer, gar gardener, writer, and educator. And she enjoyed transforming her small suburban 10th acre homestead into an edible landscape. She writes about permaculture gardening on her popular blog, which we follow, 
10th acre farm. And I followed it so that I actually used some of her ideas on her blog and somehow um, ended up in her book because of me using some of those permaculture ideas on the blog. So it just keeps on, the good stuff just keeps on spreading, you know, you just pass it forward. And she has definitely done that to us. And we've learned more, even more throughout the years from her. Um, this is her book, The Suburban Micro Farm. And she will tell us, if, the subtitle, by the way, is Modern Solutions for Busy People. Um, and she'll tell you why. So Amy, take it away. Oops. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you tonight, and I'm so uh, thankful to Dave and Nikki for having me. It's um, really nice to, to connect, connect with all of you through them. They are um, really great people to know, and um, so I'm thankful to be here. And so I'm going to try to share my screen with you so we can get forward, you know, move forward with this presentation. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself as I um, share the presentation with you. So I'm gonna stop showing you my face and I'm going to uh, share my screen now. Let's see if that works. Um, let's see. All right, everybody, can you hear me and can you see my slideshow? I can hear you and we can see your slideshow. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you again for everybody for being here. Uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you 10 tips for busy gardeners. And, um, you know, I can imagine that if you decided to be on this call, then you might feel like you have a really long to do list that is, you know, never ending. You might feel a little bit overwhelmed with life, right? Real life sometimes gets in the way of what we find joy in. And of course, if you're on this call, um, I'm sure that you find a lot of joy in, in gardening. And so, you know, you might feel like you're juggling a lot of things in your life. Um, I chose this picture uh, because, you know, she's juggling. I liked that she was juggling uh, produce items, right? I thought that that was um, pretty appropriate for all of us as gardeners. But you'll notice that she has quite the smile on her face. It appears like she is uh, effortlessly able to juggle all of these things in her life. And apparently her life consists of fruit. <laughs> but for us, um, what I am hoping for is that by the end of our time today, you'll have some tips that can help you juggle some things in your life so that uh, making time for gardening is more effortless and perhaps you'll be able to have a smile on your face. So that's our goal today. And, um, and a lot of the tips that I share with you today uh, have come directly from my book that uh, Nikki showed with you earlier, The uh, Suburban Micro Farm. And so, um, you know, Nikki uh, told you a little bit about me. Um, just real quick, I'll give you a few more details about me. About 10 years ago, uh, I was a high school teacher. Um, I became ill with an autoimmune disease, actually. And I um, was sick a lot of days. I was missing a lot of work. And um, eventually, I ended up uh, quitting my job um, because I wanted to focus on healing myself. I made a radical change in my diet to be uh, healthier. And along with that came growing a lot of my own food uh, to feed myself and to feed my family. So I became uh, a full-time homesteader. It was not um, you know, something that I was reaching for. And, and I was uh, successful and, and I was able to heal myself. And uh, that was really great news, but eventually it was time for me to get back to work. And I started getting involved in permaculture. And uh, Nikki and Dave mentioned permaculture at the beginning of this call. But for me, permaculture is a system for uh, designing agricultural landscapes 
that are ecologically sound, uh, ag agricultural landscapes that work with nature. So I became certified in, in permaculture. I started uh, designing landscapes for folks in my local area. I started teaching classes. Um, I started writing on my website, 10th Acre Farm, and I started writing my book. And suddenly, <laughs> I went from becoming a full-time, you know, homesteading gardener to having this career that was pushing gardening to the side. And eventually I decided I needed to come up with some strategies so that I could make sure that I had time for gardening in my life because that what was that's what uh, brought wellness to my life. And so the tips that I'm sharing with you today are the tips that worked for me so that I was able to uh, find joy in my garden, find time for my garden, but you know, also you know, balance that with all of that real life stuff that we all have to deal with. So without further ado, I'm gonna get into those uh, 10 tips uh, for um, busy gardeners. So my first tip for you is start small. This is actually a picture of one of two raised beds that I started on my driveway on my first homestead 10th acre farm. It was just a little 10th acre tenth of an acre plot in the suburbs and we didn't have much space. Uh, we plopped uh, two raised beds on the driveway. We had to make them kind of tall so that the uh, garden vegetables had enough space for their roots before they hit that pavement down there at the bottom. But, um, you know, starting with just those two raised beds uh, showed me a lot about what you can grow in a small space. You know, for a lot of us, we want to grow a lot of food for our family. Uh, we have high hopes and high expectations for ourselves. But if we start small and learn how to use the smallest space the most efficiently, then we can always add more. We can always add more. Um, so, so that's my first tip. Tip number two is to commit to 15 minutes a day. And um, so you'll see here in this picture that I've got a 15 minute timer and I've also got a cup of coffee. And uh, the reason why I've showed a cup of coffee here is because I believe that if you take 15 minutes a day, now, we all feel like we don't have enough time. But a lot of times when we look at our schedule, we spend, you know, at least 15 minutes a day on social media or at least 15 minutes a day plopped in front of the TV. And for a lot of us, we need that time out. Um, but we also know that the garden brings us joy. And uh, the garden is also uh, a restful place that can bring joy and can be its own time out. And so uh, when we want to bring gardening into our life, if we can just do 15 minutes a day, uh, we're going to uh, make it part of our daily routine. And the reason why I have a coffee cup here is because I love to go out in the morning as part of my morning routine, bringing my cup of coffee, and I will spend, not 15 minutes actually, I will only spend eight minutes walking through the garden. And really what that eight minutes does is um, it connects me with the garden, I walk through, I get to make some mental notes. I'll notice, you know, some weeds over there. Um, I'll notice one plant that looks particularly droopy and I'll make a mental note that it needs water. Um, there will be, you know, another spot in the garden I might notice um, a squash that miraculously grew overnight and is ready for harvest. And if I hadn't come out that morning, I might have missed it. Uh, you know, there might be an empty space where I harvested lettuce. And, um, you know, maybe I make a mental note that, you know, in the evening I might come down and just, you know, throw some seeds into that spot to get some lettuce regrowing there. So even if we go out for eight minutes, uh, there's a lot of notes that we can take. And then in the evening, perhaps seven minutes uh, before dinner or seven minutes after dinner, uh, heading out to the garden, uh, you can do one of those tasks that you made a note of. Water, do uh, you know, water something that needs watered, um, you know, throw in some lettuce seeds, uh, pull a weed or so. And of course, as your garden grows, 15 minutes might not be enough, but what it can do is just make 
the uh, regular tasks sort of manageable, right? You're sort of keeping the tasks at bay. And then maybe you come back on a Saturday or a Sunday and do a little bit of extra work. But I really appreciate uh, the strategy of um, having the garden a part of my regular daily routine. And as you grow a garden and make it bigger and um, commit to more space, uh, it's going to be really important to have that, um, you know, that regular routine of checking in on the garden. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is to plant what you love to eat. Now this goes for new gardeners as well as super busy gardeners who tend to, you know, overcommit to things. Um, there is a time and place to experiment with new uh, fruits and vegetables. But I think that um, during times of your life when you're just feeling absolutely 100% overwhelmed, or if you're super new to gardening, what we wanna do is we wanna stick to things that we love to eat because we want this experience of gardening to be enjoyable. We wanna be able to harvest what we're growing and take it in and find joy in eating it, taking that to our table. And so, you know, we can always experiment with uh, vegetables that we're not quite sure of, um, you know, later, once we have some things under our belt, once we have some things under control, then try planting those parsnips or those turnips or uh, whatever, you know, questionable veggie, uh, you know, is, is for you. Tip number four, farm out the work. So if you are feeling absolutely overwhelmed, uh, I, I know that a lot of us want to start our own seed and seedlings um, because it can be a very cost-effective way to get the garden off the ground. But, um, you know, it's, uh, there's quite a bit of work that goes into keeping a lot of uh, seedlings uh, maintained and growing well and growing healthy and you know being ready to uh, go into the garden so my tip for you is this is just one other thing what we want to do is we want to reduce the amount of stress and friction and so if we know in the back of our minds that we have all of these babies relying on us uh, for you know regular watering and for you know watching them and making sure they're getting enough uh, sunlight or if they're under grow lights making sure they have enough light that can be very stressful and so it's just one more way that we can remove some of the stress and we can do that by uh, buying some seedlings uh, from our local farmer uh, going to the farmers market and buying some seedlings from them or going to your nursery sorry Nikki I think um, Edith Carr I, uh, can you mute her or I think she's on the phone. Or, um, I'm on the phone and all. Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right, so here we go. We're going to tip number five now. Uh, tip number five is to grow perennials. I love growing perennials. Perennials consist of, you know, uh, fruit trees, berry bushes, um, asparagus, rhubarb. There are a lot of herbs that are considered perennials. And perennials are the type of plants that you plant once and you never have to plant again. Uh, they come up every year all on their own without you having to do any of the work of, of, of toiling in the soil, making sure the soil is great, planting. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, for me, growing perennials is very enjoyable. And uh, I like the fact that I, you know, don't have to replant. They come back every year for me. And, you know, with perennials, uh, you can give them a pruning once a year, but you don't have to keep uh, maintaining them. Uh, you don't have to uh, you know, in the case of the vegetable garden where I was, you know, suggesting that you uh, go out there, um, you know, every morning and check on your vegetable garden. Um, it's not as much of a concern to um, check daily on your perennials because they don't change as fast and they don't need as much attention. Uh, they're a little more self-sufficient, uh, which is great for us as, as busy gardeners. Um, 
And so you prune once a year, you harvest once a year, and um, you know, every once in a while you might need to give them a quick water, but you're definitely not gonna have to give them the attention that you have to give your vegetable garden. Tip number six, don't give in to the brown thumb. Uh, this is one of those um, tips that uh, I sort of, <laughs> I like to uh, get on my uh, uh, podium about the brown thumb because uh, a lot of times when I tell people that uh, I have a garden, that I'm a gardener, uh, their response right away is, oh, good for you, but I have a brown thumb. Everything that I try to grow dies. <laughs> and uh, you might have said that sometime or another in your life, or perhaps you know somebody who said that. Um, for me, the brown thumb is only an indication that you haven't had enough practice at something, in this case, gardening. So when I compare gardening to, say, playing the guitar, um, you wouldn't expect someone to be able to pick up the guitar and start playing a song right away. Um, you would expect someone who can play the guitar to have spent some time practicing before they got to the level of being able to play songs <laughs> for you on their, on their guitar. And it's the same way with gardening. Um, it definitely takes some practice. We're going to have failures. Um, even expert gardeners have failures. It's part of working with nature. Nature is always communicating with us. And, you know, it's our job to listen, to observe, um, to figure out what nature is trying to tell us. So, you know, for example, in this picture, uh, you might recognize this pest, um, this green, giant green caterpillar is called a tomato hornworm. And um, it likes to attack our tomato plants. And you know, once you've seen this pest on your tomato plants and you've seen some signs of wilting, uh, you know, you might be discouraged uh, because an all out breakout would definitely, you know, spell doom for your <laughs> tomatoes. But you'll notice that this caterpillar um, has these uh, white things on those on them and uh, you might know that the um, parasitic wasp is a beneficial predator of the garden now nature is harsh right <laughs> so uh, the parasitic wasp will uh, lay eggs on the caterpillar and that's what you're seeing here these are egg sacs and they're going to eventually um, you know, be little mini parasitic wasps who will, um, and they will feed on this caterpillar until it dies, which is a very, very harsh way to die. But it means that if we see these uh, little egg sacs on the caterpillar, it means that our garden ecosystem is working in our benefit. And so what I encourage you to do is if something happens in your garden that is not fun, you have something that fails, your tomatoes look wilted, your, um, you know, your carrots just don't sprout, you have some kind of problem. We've all had some kind of failure in the garden. I encourage you to just ask why. What can I do differently? If, if we look at garden, gardening as practice, think of it as this is just practice. So if it's practice, what can we dry differently? And in this case, um, it's a really good thing that we have a parasitic wasp who was attracted to our garden and who parasitized this hornworm for us. But if you have these hornworms and no um, egg sacs on the caterpillar, that means that the parasitic wasp wasn't attracted to your garden. So perhaps, just we want to ask the question, what can I do differently next time? You may try growing some flowers that attract the parasitic wasps. And so that's just one example of what we can do. But we always want to uh, approach gardening not as in I'm good at this or I'm bad at this, I have a brown thumb or a green thumb, but uh, 
view it as practice. Just like playing the guitar, we want to get better at it, so we want to ask, what can I do differently next time? Uh, if I'm gonna have another shot at this, another uh, round of practice, uh, what can I try different? Tip number seven is to get it on the calendar. Now, for, for folks who have um, purchased my book, The Suburban Micro Farm, uh, there's a lot of um, free supplemental materials that come with the book, um, including monthly calendars and monthly checklists and um, seed starting and planting schedules. And all of that is to help you stay organized because I feel like if we can uh, stay organized and um, you know, know what we have ahead of us, um, in the garden, we can you know, make sure that we've uh, allotted time for it and, need, and we can make sure that it's not overwhelming for us. So um, this is just you know, an example of um, uh, the February calendar uh, and all of the calendars come blank like this. I encourage you to fill one in for uh, the year that you're in and then for each day of the week, uh, I, I encourage you to write in your regular real life schedule so that you can figure out where you have open spaces that you might be able to dedicate to gardening tasks. And this just kind of helps you. And again, it's another strategy for fitting gardening into your regular real life. If we schedule in, you know, uh, going to the gym or if we schedule, you know, going to the dentist or, um, you know, running our kids to practice and Boy Scouts and things like that. Well, you know, whatever is on your schedule, we want to have gardening be a part of our regular life too. And we want to treat it as though it's just as important. Tip number eight, prioritize harvesting. So uh, I have to tell you a true story about myself. I love... I love working in my garden. My garden brings me a lot of joy, and um, that's where I like spending all of my time. But part of gardening is harvesting all of that yummy stuff and bringing it inside and doing stuff with it. <laughs> um, and, you know, a lot of times when I go to my garden, I am tempted to work on other things. Like for example, I've got a ton of stuff that needs harvested, but over here I've got all this stuff that needs watered. Over here I've got this area that needs weeded. Over here I've got you know a bed that's ready to be seeded with fall vegetables. And my brain can sort of you know circle, circle around and with all of the things that I could be doing when I go out to the garden. But I encourage you to prioritize harvesting. Make that the first thing that you do. Uh, make it the thing that if you don't have any other time to spend in the garden, make sure that you harvest the things that you've already worked hard to grow for yourself. You don't want to miss out on those harvests. Tip number nine, time it right. So a lot of people will go through this uh, presentation that I've just uh, sort of I'm almost uh, gone through because we've got 10 tips and um, you're, you know, you're looking at my suggestions and you know, some of you are saying those are all really awesome tips, but it's still not going to work for me. Like I'm still super overwhelmed. I still, I'm just, I'm not gonna be able to, uh, you know, it would take magic <laughs> to fit time for gardening into my life, even though I really want it. Sometimes we have to be realistic about where we are in our life, what kinds of uh, expectations we have to deal with. And, you know, sometimes, it's not the right time for us to have a garden. And we shouldn't feel guilty about that. We shouldn't feel bad. We shouldn't spend a lot of time stressing ourselves out because if our life is so busy that we can't have a garden, uh, the last thing we wanna do is stress ourselves out even more by feeling guilty that we're not getting out to the garden. 
So sometimes we have to uh, admit to ourselves that now is not the time to have a garden. Um, but there are some things that I would encourage you to do while you are waiting for when gardening can be part of your life again. Uh, I absolutely believe that uh, healthy eating, uh, eating fresh local produce and, and fresh local food is absolutely um, you know, important to keeping you healthy, um, especially during stressful times of your life. Um, I, I think that that's a priority over you know, whether or not you grow it yourself. So if you can't grow it yourself, I definitely encourage you to look into other things that you could do, like buying some things at the farmer's market. Now, for me, buying food uh, produce at the farmer's market is kind of like buying food a la carte, like healthy pro uh, organic produce. Buying it from a farmer is sometimes, you know, it's like the a la carte price. Uh, it's you're paying a premium to buy individual um, items of produce. So on the flip side of that, I totally encourage uh, if you're in this situation to consider joining a CSA. A CSA is Community Supported Agriculture. And this is a subscription process, uh, a subscription program with a local farmer where you pay uh, a fee at the beginning of the growing season and then on a regular basis, you get a share of the produce, uh, very similar to what you see in this picture. Now, joining a CSA is kind of like a wholesale program, so you're getting a lot more bang for your buck. Um, and I, I think that it's a really great way to go um, as far as cost and um, you know, getting the healthy produce that you need at a reasonable price. So, of course, um, you know, do what you need to do. Even, or, uh, you know, some things don't need to be organic, but some produce is pretty heavily sprayed with chemicals, and you are going to want to look into getting some of those organically at the grocery store at the very least. Um, again, not everything has to be organic, but um, buying healthy food for yourself is essential, whether you can grow it for yourself or not. And finally, my tip is to laugh because all of this gardening stuff is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a way for us to find joy, uh, connecting to nature, connecting to our yards, connecting to our family. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be a very enjoyable process for us. And so, you know, sometimes we just have to say, uh, there are some weeds over there and, uh, you know, they're not going to kill me, <laughs> right? Um, my life will go on and my garden will go on and, you know, everything will be fine. Um, and sometimes we just need to, you know, take, take it down a notch with our, with our expectations for ourselves and just enjoy the process. So whether you are, uh, starting small, um, with a few raised beds or, uh, working on uh, committing to 15 minutes a day in your garden or, you know, planting what you love to eat or, um, you know, uh, practicing to get over that brown thumb syndrome, you know, whatever it is for you. Um, I, I hope that uh, some of these tips uh, are useful for you. So in summary, I absolutely encourage you to not get bogged down with high expectations and just enjoy your experience. Enjoy the process of getting to know your garden. Enjoy the process of finding time to fit gardening into your life. And so that is actually all that I have for you today. Um, you can learn more about Ten Thicker Farm uh, which is my website, and you can also download a free excerpt of my book, The Suburban Microfarm, uh, at my website. It's 10thacrefarm.com slash permaculture dash gardens. And this is actually a free resource uh, just for you for being on this website. Uh, I'm sorry, being on this webinar and, um, uh, you know, connecting with me. Uh, I'm excited to connect with you. And um, I know that Nikki and Dave have some things for you, but you know, if you have any 
suggestions for busy gardeners that have worked for you. I'd love to see those in the comments. So thanks for being here today. Thank you so much, Amy. I, I find I love tip six, eight, nine, and ten the most of all your of all your tips. So I know we um have so we have had some comments in the chat box and we had one raised hand. Um by Edith Carr. Did you want to ask a question? Edith. Let me see if I can unmute you. Oops. Oh, Dave. I think you will have to unmute her. Oh, yeah, I, I unmuted her. Okay. Edith, do you have any you. questions? Yes. Uh, I was just going to ask her. Uh, I actually found... Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. I, I found two of those caterpillars that you show on the picture today and my tomato plant. Yeah. So <laughs> I... I kind of didn't understand quite a bit of, you said the eggs belong to whom? I thought they were caterpillar eggs for some reason, but where are those eggs from? Where are those from? Uh, the eggs are parasitic wasp eggs. Oh, they're wasp. And you said that they're gonna eat the caterpillar? Is that what you said? They're gonna eat the caterpillar, that's right. <laughs> oh my God. Well, uh, did you say that it is good to leave them there or to just take them out? Because I cut them off the tree, the uh, plant, the tomato plant. Um, if you have a caterpillar that does not have uh, egg sacs on it, then I would consider removing it from the garden. If it has the egg sacs on it, you do not have to worry at all. Nature is taking care of it for you. Oh, wow. It had a whole bunch of the eggs on top of them. Great. That's good news. You have a healthy garden ecosystem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And I, I had never seen those caterpillars with those egg sacs before. So it was quite of amusement today. Awesome. Wow. We, yeah, we just keep on learning. I had never seen that picture either. I just wanted to um, share the screen because... This is the book again. Some people were asking about companion planting and on page 98 of this book, and if you want uh, to get to purchase a copy of it, um, this link is an affiliate link that we uh, use that we would get like $1 from, <laughs> I believe from the purchase of this book in order to keep the lights open here at Permaculture Gardens. But so if you check out the book, you can download a copy from it on Amy's um, 10th Acre Farm slash Permaculture Gardens website. Uh, we will include that link as well for your free copy. Thank you so much, Amy, for that gift to people um, just to check out your book. But um, that was a good question. And uh, companion plants, companion uh, plants charts are located inside this book among many other charts that are just handy so you don't have to remember everything you just open the book and and it's there so in case you wanted to buy it this is the link and it's page 98 <laughs> there's some of these charts there that are companion plants to whatever it is that you want to plant so if it's eggplants she says veg uh, legumes pepper and potato um, this is just a teaser. <laughs> I won't give it. It's too long of a list for me to go through anyway. <laughs> Peppers, it's carrot and onion, but um, that I can't, wouldn't be able to remember that. So I just rely on that book and we use that book ourselves and we recommend it to anybody we work with just because it's really practical and handy and we own a lot of permaculture books. But, <laughs> but this one, we really use a lot. So thank you. Um, Yes, thank you for that question on the tomato hornworm. That was also something that was on my, like, I did never seen that picture. I just know that tomato hornworms are bad. I never knew what it looked like because I never thought, I, I don't think we have ever had it. I do. You know, the, the first year we maybe got uh, a couple of them, but not recently, yeah. <laughs> they do become a very beautiful uh, hummingbird moth um, oh. if they are allowed to, you know, develop, but, um, but, in the meantime, in their caterpillar stage, they're not very friendly to the tomato plants. So, you know, kind of have to balance, um, 
you know, what is most important to you? Maybe, um, you know, I don't know, leave a few, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, this is, this really, uh, this concludes the end, but we do have a state of the end little prize giveaway, a free packet of seeds that we would mail to you. Um, Amy, did you have like a little trivia or and if you don't, no pressure. I have something. I, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we were asking Amy if she had a trivia that people could answer. But I guess my question, and for those lucky ones of you who came on early, um, who is the artist or what is the name of the band that we played earlier in the show? And if you could type that in the chat box, we will play it as our closing theme. And if you can type that on the chat box, as we the, the band name because you gave away the, the guy's name. <laughs> I gave away one of the this little lead singer name. So if you can figure out the band name, now I have to. Oh no! Now I have to share the screen, but I have to get out of here first. One second. Oh. Okay. Super view. Are you going to play it again or? Yes, I am going to play it again. I'm just toggling my screens here. Or you could do the other one, the. Um, here, I, uh, I you, you, you are what you eat, right? <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. The, Just enjoy the, the video. And the name of the artist. <laughs> or the name of the artist. You can type. So what's interesting about this band is uh, they were actually invited to the UN. Uh, there was a, a conference on, I think, food security. And this was kind of like the kickoff video to get the session started. So. Awesome. Okay. Yes. Um, he's very, he's written a lot about, a lot of permaculture songs. So let me just stop share. Okay, so we got Emmy and Chad. Yes, I know. <laughs> just tell us what seeds you want. We know where to find you and we already know your addresses actually. So we, we can mail those to you. Whatever seeds you want for the fall, especially think ahead. So yes, I know he's... He's, he's awesome. Very down-to-earth guy from Australia. All right. Well, good night, everyone. It was a pleasure being with you tonight. And it was an honor to have you, Amy. 
we've learned so much from you again, never fails. And this is the nice thing about permaculture. So good luck with your book. And we look forward to that colored copy version coming in the future. Okay, good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you for being here. Good night.